And now the question is, who is this man? Theologians has had different ideas. But since the opening of the seven seals, the mysterious book that's been mysterious to us, according to Revelations 10, 1 to 7, all the mysteries that's wrote in this book that's been hid down through the age of the reformers is supposed to be brought out into view by the angel of the last church age. How many knows that's right? Amen. Right. Supposed to be brought. All the mysteries of the mysterious book is to be revealed to the Lady Osea messenger of that age. After that, the angels of the Lord appeared and told about the seven uh, trumpets or the seven seals. And I was to return back here to Jeffersonville and preach the seven seals. And there, if I've ever said anything that was inspired, it was in that. There, where the angel Lord met us in the Bible become a new Bible. There it opened up and revealed all the things that the reformers and things had left out. It was a complete revelation of Jesus Christ, altogether new to us, but perfectly, exactly with the Scripture. That was the Word, which has always been. I was so inspired and directed. Brother Branham, them seven thunders that the voice thundered, and he said, write it not. See, but close it up. Said so that'll be seven thunders that will be revealed in the last days. See, seven thunders that'll tell us. Now, don't that sound real good? See, but watch what you're talking about when you say that. He said, see that you ride it not. See, these seven thunders utter their voices. See, and he said, don't write that. See, but it's be sealed up in the book until the last days. Now, someone has been, many has been sent me in. Theologians said, Brother Branham, if the Lord God said, if, if with your experience that the Lord has given you for his people, humbly saying this, said you'd be eligible to write a, a Bible yourself. Your word, if God has manifested. I said, that might be true. See, he's trying to catch me. I said, but you see, I couldn't do that. He said, why couldn't you have all the qualifications? I said, but you look, one word cannot be added or taken away. Think. And he said, well, then, them seven thunders, you see, he said, well, them seven thunders blasting out, won't that be a revelation be given to some man? I said, no, sir, it would be adding something to it or taking something from it. It's all revealed in there. And the seven seals opened up the revelation of what that was. Amen. Said, it's still in the Word. You see, you can't get out of that Word. It won't leave the Word. And God's Spirit will never leave that Word. It'll stay right with the Word, blinding some and open the eyes of others. Amen. It'll always do that. Like the seven seals. The seven seals, someone kept saying to me, That'll you, the Lord will speak to you, Brother Bram, when these seals are revealed. And uh, tell us how I get closer to God. How did, I said, no, sir. It can't be. Because the Bible, the seven seals on it, had the seven mysteries hid. It was already wrote, but they didn't understand what it was. Then, back out there at the beginning of the seven seals, when those seven angels come down in that pyramid form, stood there and told me to return back here to speak on those seven seals and be with me. He showed me what they were, the lost things. I always thought they were sealed on the back of the book, and it'd be something wasn't wrote in the book. But it turned out that it was made known that he cannot do that. It isn't something that's written in the book. It's something that's been hid in the book. For whosoever shall take one word from it or add one word to it. So it is a mystery that's been in the book in these seven church ages. Each one of them produced a, a mystery. All about water baptism and these other things that they fumbled about so long. Then when that went up, the big observatories from way down in California, from down in Mexico, over Tucson, everywhere taking the picture of it. It was a mysterious sight. The sixth chapter deals with the with the white horse, which was the Holy Spirit, went forth conquering to conquer. Then come the pale horse, death, 
and hell followed it and each one of those riders on the horses. Now, after these things, after this great destruction, first went forth with the Holy Ghost across the earth, conquering and to conquer. Then come the one in the great famine time, measure of wheat for a penny, two measures of barley for a penny, and um, so forth. But don't hurt my oil and wine. And then on down till he opened these, these seals. Is a power, a charger, and said the man that sat on that was the the white horse or the Holy Spirit that went forth in the early age and conquered that age for the kingdom of God. He had a bow in his hand, which meant like Cupid. He shot the arrows of love into the hearts of the people, the love of God, and he conquered. Now that sounds very good, but it isn't the truth. You know, uh, it wasn't. White does mean righteous. We, we realize that. The white means righteous. The teachers taught it. There was the Holy Spirit conquering in the first age. But my revelation of, by the Holy Spirit is not that way. My revelation by the Holy Spirit is Christ and the Holy Spirit is the self-same person. Amen. Only in a different form. Amen. So here stands Christ, the Lamb. We know He was the Lamb. He's standing here with the books in his hand, and there goes the white horse rider. Amen. Hey? So it wasn't the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's one of the mysteries of the last days, how that Christ can be the three persons in one. It's not three different people, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, being three gods, as the Trinitarians try to tell us it is. It's three... It's three manifestations of the same person. Or you might call it three offices. If you're talking to ministers, you wouldn't use office. Although well, you'll have to think of a case. So I'll tell you, of course, Christ could say, I'll pray in my office and he'll send you another office. We know that. But if you want to make it, it's three attributes of the same God. Amen. Not three gods, three attributes of the same God. And so, how could Christ be out there with a white horse conquering and standing here with a book in his hand? It isn't so. It isn't Christ. Notice. Now, the Holy Spirit and the revelation and Christ is, the Holy Spirit is Christ in another form. Right. Notice. It is the Lamb that opens the book. And the Lamb is Christ. And Christ is not seen anymore from then, but he is seen in the book of Revelations, the 19th chapter, coming on a white horse. Amen. Who is this mysterious rider of the first church age then? Who is he? Well, let's think of it. Who is this mysterious rider that starts forth in the first church age and rides come on out into the church? goes to the end. The second seal comes forth and goes right on out into the end. The third seal comes forth and goes right on out into the end. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Every one of them winds right up out here in the east. Now at the end time, these books have been rolled up all the time with these mysteries in them. It's broken. Amen. Then out comes the mystery to see what it is. But actually they started forth at the first church age because it's the church, first church age received the message like this. A white horse rider went out. See, who is he? He's mighty in his conquering power. The great fellow in his conquering power. You want me to tell you who he is? He's the Antichrist. Exactly what he is. Now, because you see, if an Antichrist, Jesus said, that the two would be so close together and so it would deceive the very elected, the bride, if it was possible. Antichrist. It's the Antichrist spirit. Remember in the church ages, when we opened the first church age back there, we found out that the Holy Spirit was against a certain thing that got started in that church age. And that was called the deed of the Nicolaitans. You remember Nico means to conquer. Laity means the church. The laity. Oh.